Man, this is really fall colors right over here. It is actually cold, pretty chilly today, windy, perfect for some trout fishing. So, all right, let's get this intro started. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Fully Fishing channel. Today is October 17th. 2019 I believe it is going to be my outing number 156 of this year and before I talk to you guys about what we're going to be doing today I do need to clarify a few things about my recent Poconos trip here on the YouTube channel if you haven't watched those videos yet I don't know what you were waiting for I'm going to link one of them above not only I caught some beautiful native wild and stocked trout in the Poconos, I also got to land two little shiners that I had no idea what they were. Remember those? So I have correctly identified them now. I am very, very proud and happy to say that those two species actually turned out to be two new species for my life list. Yes, one of them turned out to be the bridal shiner, the Notropis bifrenatus, that was number 157, I mean 257 for me. And the other one turned out to be the iron collar shiner, the Notropis calibaeus, species number 258. Now, I would like to emphasize that those species are endangered in the state of Pennsylvania. At the time when my friend Riley and I, we were targeting those species, we had no idea what they were. We were not targeting them per se, right? They came up by accident. So they are not supposed to be targeted in the state of Pennsylvania, okay? Because they are endangered also, if any of you ever comes into contact with those species in this state, this is just a disclaimer, make sure that you take very, very good care of them and release them right away, okay? They may be micro species, they may be shiners, but they are endangered and nowadays their population is in decline, okay? Their native ranges year by year is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Anyways, I did catch all those wonderful species in the Poconos, but I am kind of still of a failure when it comes to my home waters, right? It is the fall trout season and I have yet to catch a fall stock trout here in Philadelphia County, which is why I came to the Penny Pack today. My main objective is just really to land a trout and bring it home so that Creeper Kid and I can have it for dinner, right? So you know what? Let's go to the creek first and let's check the conditions and we're going to get the fishing started. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment of the truth. We actually had some pretty heavy rain yesterday around the area, so since until this morning the creek was like chocolate milk let's see how the creek is looking right now yeah the flow is still a little bit higher than usual uh, we got the usual amount of geese over here which is not good uh, i think i could potentially throw a power bait in there and try to get things done quickly or maybe get started with a spinner although with the spinner look at all these leaves right it will make things very complicated. All right, let me get my stuff ready and let's get go let's go catch some fish for dinner. As always, everyone is hitting the dam. I never really understood why everyone loves that dam so much. We got like four people at the dam, but look at this little spot over here. Look how juicy this little spot is, right? You got the shallow place over there that kind of turns into a flow over here that is a little bit deeper. I'm going to run my Thomas, my trusted Thomas, one six of an ounce inline spinner to see if anything shows up around this area. Should be crazy good for spinners, man. Come on. There's one, there's one. Spinner, man, this is good for spinners. I just knew it. This whole area looks so juicy, you know what I'm saying? It's a nice size one too. Beautiful. Let's see what we got over here. It's a brown. 
holy moly it is a brown it's not even a rainbow it's the salmo it's the salmo truta nice size brown too beautiful okay that is pretty not cool first fish of the day actually turned out to be a brown trout uh, I kept it outside of the water for a little bit, so I don't know if this fowl is going to be okay or not. I certainly hope so, but if not, this is a catch-and-take fishery, so I'll gladly take this brown trout home to eat. It is looking a little bit weak. I think this one was stocked here by accident, though, because I'm telling you, they're not supposed to stock brown trouts here for the fall. So, yeah, I think this one's going to be dinner, man. This trout... Oh, wait, 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 wait no 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 no. that one's good to go good to go all right it's beautiful okay so there's some fish staying right by the fall yeah, yeah i just had another hit another hit by the falls There's one right behind the rock. Textbook bite. Textbook bite. I think it's another brown. If it's a rainbow, I'll take it. If it is a brown, I'll release it. This is how it works for the fall for me over here. I would gladly. Man, these sizes of this fish are not bad either. They're all over here. Oh, it's a brown. It's a brown. I'll just release this guy over here for you guys to see. But there you have it. Another brown trout for the day inhaled the spinner gotta do a quick release here in the water let's see oh i think i got it i think i got it i think i got it okay gotta do some surgery here with the trebles there we have it that's the third one and out beautiful back it goes just like that gave me an amazing fight There's one, there's one. Oh yeah, nailed the spinner, son. Very nice, got it in the current. I was starting to get afraid, man. I released two of them, and then suddenly I want to take home some dinner. No trout shows up. So technically speaking, if I wanted to take some fish back home, this would have been my limit of three brown trout, right? Now I got one brown trout for dinner. I'll try to catch maybe another one. I like my fish fresh. But yeah, this one here, I'm gonna take it home. I don't think there are only a few brown trout in here. There we go. There we go. The smaller spinner, Johnson. I switched to the 124 ounce Johnson. Trout got active, huh? Very nice. Is it another brown? It's another brown. <laughs> yeah since i caught a bunch of them here on the ep series already i thought maybe we just switch to the 124 ounce you know look how small the little johnson hey that's not to say that my johnson is small i i mean yeah it is a small johnson anyways <laughs> we got you <laughs> we got you dang dude i kind of you know dang dude all right we got two fish for dinner so far There's one, there's one, my third and final one, if I can land it. Dude, that means, if I can land this guy, that means that I got my limit and got two extra that I released for a total of five today. Pretty nice one too, look at that, all browns, man. No rainbows today, today is only browns. Boy, healthy, okay. All right, well, caught my limit. Time to go back home to the kitchen. Let's cook this fish up, you know. Uh, serve Cripper Kid some food. That's beautiful. Final view of our third stock trout of the day. Whew. All right, time to go back to the kitchen and uh, do a hot meal for tonight. Welcome to the EPF kitchen. 
Folks at home, folks at home, I just got back from the Penny Pack Creek and let me tell you something, nothing gets more fresh than trout that just came from the creek to the table, right? So I got three beautiful samples of brown trout right in front of me and I guess first and foremost I'm going to kind of gut them, I'm going to chop the head off, take the guts off, right? And I'm going to kind of cut them in diagonal steaks like I have done in previous videos so that, you know, when I eat it, I'm going to fry it. Maybe the little bones on top of this fish are going to be crispy as well. Some extra calcium. Before I get started, I would like to show you guys how beautiful this fish is, right? Check this out, man. This is the brown trout from the Penny Pack Creek, right? And you guys can notice how different actually this salmotruta or these salmotruta are actually from the for, from the ones that I just recently caught in the Poconos, right? These are really, really different. Well, let me tell the truth, okay? The truth is that these here are a lowland brown trout. <laughs> no, I'm just messing, okay? There ain't no lowland brown trout, man. These are actually Galilean brown trout. <laughs> They have been exposed, you know, to the overflowing energy of the hatcheries in Galar. And then they became like this, right? So, all right, let me get the chopping started over here. And then after that, we're going to marinate it and fry them up. And then I'm going to serve dinner for Cropper Kid and I. Wow. So, I was just cleaning my trout over here. As you guys can see, I just cleaned one. I got one left. I opened the fat one over here. And look what I found. I know that the light is not really good, but these stock trout, the females at least, are loaded with eggs, man. Loaded. But anyways, right, they do stock it in the Penny Pack Creek, which is a uh, is a trout approved watershed. The, there are no wild trout in the Penny Pack, and even if these trout were born in the creek, it is not it, it, they can't really survive in the creek, right? But look at these, man. How many eggs are in this single female trout? Holy cow. I'm just getting done cleaning my last trout over here. Every time you clean your trout, as a matter of fact, right, just make sure that you always clean the line here in the middle which is actually the bloodline, right? If you don't clean the bloodline here in the middle, your fish very likely is not going to taste good, okay? So every time you clean the fish, make sure you, glad you get that bloodline over there and let it stay as wide as possible in this part. I'm going to start chopping up now into diagonal steaks, marinate it, and then fry it. Not bad, not bad. So I just marinated my fish. As you guys can see, I cut it into diagonal steaks, like I told you guys, right? And I just marinated my fish here with a bunch of different things like this five spice powder, turmeric, cooking, cooking wine, black pepper, ground cumin, and this here uh, is in a hickory smoked sea salt container, but this is actually Himalayan pink salt. And this is really the result, right? This has been marinating over here for about 15 minutes now. As you guys can see, like I told you previously in this video, I made the cuts diagonal, right? So the cut is actually pretty darn long. This is going to be three layers, meaning that the marinade is the first layer. Second layer is going to be egg and then dip it in flour, and finally into the oil, right? It should be delicious. We will see. I think the oil should be about ready. Oh yeah, the oil is about ready, boy. So this is what we gotta do. Get a piece of fish, dip it into the egg, then dip it into the flour, just like that, beautiful, and in the hot oil it goes beautiful right another piece egg flour okay and into the hot oil it goes i gotta do it one more time just for you guys to see right because this is actually quite fun to do egg <laughs> flour and then into the hot oil <laughs> all right 
Now you see, because these steaks are actually chopped pretty thin, you can chop as thin as you want. You don't really need to fry this for a long period of time, right? Once you see that your fish pieces are about golden brown, like this fella over here, you can just take it out. If you want the bones to be a little bit more like, you know, crunchy, you can just fry them for a little bit longer. But this is pretty much it. And this is how I'm going to fry all the other pieces, right? This is the first batch. This is going to be the second batch. And then, man, voila, it's just dinner time, fried fish. Oh, yes, look at this, look at this. This is great, look at that. Look at the colors, right, and the crunchiness. It's kind of like frying chicken, but instead of chicken, it's like, you know, frying fish. That's pretty much it. Look at this. Look at this. This is going to be great, man. Can't wait to put this on the table just now and have a bite, you know? Yo, man, this legit looks like the Popeye fried chicken, doesn't it? But instead of the fried chicken, it's just fried fish. You sure you want to show up on YouTube with that thing in your head, though? Okay, man. Hey, as far as you're happy with that, let me go grab the fish, all right, dude? You ready to taste the fish, bro? Okay, hell yeah, dude. All right, first, let's talk about the looks, right? Okay. This is our dish for the evening, man. How does, how does it look like? Does it look good? It, it does look good. It does look real good, right? Okay, grab a piece, man. Grab a piece and try it out. I'm gonna grab a piece and try it out, too. Taste test, okay? Be careful with the with the bones, all right? Okay. Especially that has a center bone, okay? Okay. All right. Hmm. So what do you think? It's not bad. It's not bad, I'm pretty crunchy, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe you could use a little bit more salt? Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more seasoning or salt. Yeah, but otherwise seasoning I put a lot. I think maybe you could use a little bit more salt or uh, otherwise, it's pretty darn good. Yeah, it's not bad. So rate it zero to ten. How much we said? This is going to be our dinner, by the way. Seven. Seven out of ten. Look, coming from Cripper Kid, that's a high rating, okay? Because the only thing that he rates above nine is what steak, right? Uh, I guess. Anyways, folks, uh, this is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, trout catch and cook fried trout here uh, I got some uh, other stuff that I have to cook for Cripper Kid we're not going to have only the trout for dinner right so I'm gonna get to cooking thank you very much for watching you want to say anything to YouTube before I turn it off no <laughs> all right I'll see you guys next time that's it